In this video, I'm gonna provide my first impressions on the stock 2021 BMC Team Machine SLR01 III, which is the same geometry and design of the latest 2022 models. And I'm gonna do this through the lens of someone who owned the previous version of the Team Machine before the geometry and design was upgraded in 2021 and before, according to BMC, the BMC Team Machine became 20% stiffer. 9% lighter and 6% more aerodynamic. So we're gonna split this first impressions into four main parts. Number one, we're gonna talk about the weight of this new BMC versus the predecessor, and mine had rim brakes. Number two, the geometry and design versus the predecessor. Number three, my riding experience, first impressions. And number four, opportunities for improvement or what I don't like about this BMC. So I'm gonna keep this first impressions short and sharp because mid-year I'm gonna share a full comprehensive review on this bike where I'll also share with you an interview I'm gonna be having with a head product engineer at BMC and also some on-road speed tests I'll be doing on this bike. But just know before we get into the first impressions, I do own this BMC team machine and if you want the full story on that, I'll link it up there. So number one is the weight of the BMC team machine. So this BMC team machine SLR013, 54 centimeter, which comes in at 10,500 AUD with SRAM, Force Access 12 speed and DT Swiss spline 35 millimeter carbon disc rims, which is a claim to weigh 7.6 kilograms on BMC's website, comes in at 7.635 kilograms. That's without pedals, but with the BMC mount and integrated bottle cages. The only difference on this bike in terms of stock is the saddle. I've got a specialized tube there versus what it comes with, which is a physique saddle. Now, if we compare that weight to the predecessor at 54 centimeter with rim brakes, and that's Ultegra Mechanical on that bike, with MV 3.4 carbon clinches, we have a weight difference of 200 grams. Number two is the geometry and design. Geometry wise, comparing this 54 centimeter versus its predecessor 54 centimeter, we basically have the same bike with some small tweaks. Notably the seat tube and the head tube, which were potential areas where BMC could reduce carbon fiber and therefore frame weight. Although the stack on the BMC, which enables the rider to get more aerodynamic despite the head tube change stays exactly the same. No doubt due to some other micro adjustments in geometry BMC have made with this iteration. Now, if we look at the BMC from afar, this BMC versus the predecessor, they almost look identical, which is unlike other brands when you compare, say, a specialized Tarmac SL6 to the SL7, there's been some major changes there, or the Cannondale Super 6, their recent upgrades, that was a huge, or what appeared to be a huge overhaul, whereas BMC have stuck to their guns, which I like because they're inadvertently saying they've got a product they stand by without needing major overhauls. However, getting up close and personal with this BMC, I can definitely see some notable modifications, including the BMC team machine taking on some of the camtail tube shapes you see on the time machine, which now accommodates custom integrated bottle cages similar to its time machine companion. The fork is definitely finer and looks to be one of the focal points in the new design for greater aerodynamics. And the back end visually appears to be the same as the predecessor, but the riding experience in the rear has definitely changed, which I'll explain for you shortly. Aesthetically, I'm a big fan of the Lamborghini Orange, which has a super polished integration of black into the top tube. Although I feel like this model is let down by the exclusion of the BMC aerodynamic handlebar system, which I'll explain for you in point number four. Point number three is my riding experience. So owning the previous model of the BMC team machine, external to price, I felt like there was two areas that let that bike down. I was a huge fan of it, but there were two things in particular that I didn't so much like. Number one was I felt like there was just too much softness in the back end of the BMC. In fact, a lot of users, including myself, complain of the sensation of having a flat tire when riding on harsher roads. And number two, I felt like the BMC was missing an edge. And that edge was speed or aerodynamics. While it certainly wasn't a slow bike, for me getting on say a Tarmac SL6 or a Cannondale Super 6, I would instantly feel more aggressiveness, more aerodynamic advantages being on those all round race bikes over the previous BMC. But can I say after riding this BMC team machine for a few weeks now, 
any negativity I had surrounding the BMC has mostly been swallowed up by improvements. You still get that soft sensation in the rear from time to time, but there's definitely been some modifications there. And look, whether this, I'll call it an enhancement, has come about because of 20% more stiffness in the BMC, according to BMC, I assume so, and I don't think you wanna lose that sensation completely in terms of softness in the rear, because all of a sudden you'll start to feel a lot more of the road, in your lower back and BMC will lose its mantle as one of the, if not the most comfortable all round race bikes on the market. So I think BMC have got the blend right in the rear of the bike now. And in terms of speed and aerodynamics, there is a noticeable improvement there. What does noticeable mean? Well, BMC say 6% and to me, 6% more or less of anything is typically hardly noticeable, but can I just say, I have definitely noticed not only greater general aerodynamics, but more overall aggressiveness, whether that be cornering, accelerating, or descending. No longer will I take my BMC team machine to a crit race and feel like I'm perhaps a little bit disadvantaged to those competitors who are on an aero bike. And in terms of road racing and general riding, this bike to me just ticks so many boxes. It still remains to be easily the most comfortable all-round race bike I've ever personally ridden and to add these new improvements in, I can honestly say I'm super impressed. External to one thing, which takes us to point number four, which is opportunities for improvement. So the only thing I don't like about this bike is the front end. Yes, it's the three. I understand it's not the one, it's not the two, but it's still ten and a half thousand dollars AUD. Or in the US, it's 7,700 USD, or in Europe, it's 7,500 euro. And that's a lot of money. So to have to dip out on the ICS, the integrated cockpit system, which is lighter, it's more aerodynamic, it looks more aesthetically pleasing, and I'm sure a more comfortable touch point for your hands, in exchange for what feels like a cheap alloy handlebar with a stem that feels a little bit flexy. Let's just say, I'm a little bit disappointed. So what I'm gonna do for the full comprehensive review is I'm gonna upgrade the front end of the bike to the BMC integrated cockpit system so I can share with you what impact that has to the three. If you're keen to see the full comprehensive review and if you're yet to subscribe to the channel, please consider doing it below. And if you've gotten value out of this video today, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next video.